Amen. Amen. We bless the Lord for this time. We praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me know if you can hear this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you sharing the sound? Hear it? No, I cannot hear. Try to share the sound. It's uh I thought it was on. Um because it's the same sound as me speaking. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, okay, I'm going to just um, uh, stop share. No, you can put it on even if I don't hear. Well, nobody can hear. <laughs> Let me see. Um, but did you click on share the sound? Uh, hold on. I thought I did because when I do the, where is that? Because when I put the, um, you have to to go where there's three dot, and where there's three dot you click, and at the bottom of it you will see share sound. If not, you are the only one hearing it. Oh, thank you. Uh, it says put back the video. I will show you. Oh, it's when we're in the video itself. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank Put you. Put back for the this. video. Share, share the screen again. Mm -hmm. Oh, up here. Uh -huh. oh, oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll start it again. Thank you so much. Let me know. Yeah, I can hear it now. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Everything you do is good. Hallelujah. You are God. You are God. Hallelujah. Everything. You do is good. Hallelujah. You are God. You, you are God. God alone. You have the final, final, final word in that day. You have the final, final, final. Hallelujah. You are God. You are everything you do. You are you are you 
God has the final word all the time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
So we're going to start by looking uh, at a, a specific angle of this particular word. Um, the message today is on Hebrews 4, 12, and 13. And I wanted us to really just thank the Lord for his dependability, for his faithfulness. So I'm going to share my screen, but let's just start off with a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We honor your word. We bless you that you uphold your word even above your name. We bless you for every word that has come from the Father. We thank you for your grace, for your, for your patience with us, and for guiding us into your purposes with every single word that you have spoken. Father, we pray for this watch. May it be a blessing. Uh, Father, may you remove my flesh and Holy Spirit, may you have your way. We pray for all those that will join and those that will listen, Father, that they will receive the, the essence that you desire from this um, lesson. Father, we bless you. We say thank you. And we saturate it in your word. And it's in Yeshua's mighty, most precious name that we pray. Amen. 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 So I'm going to be sharing... Um, didn't stop share this excuse me um get this amen hallelujah so we're we're, we're looking at hebrews 4 chapter 4 verses 12 and 13 and looking at them from a very um what we want to understand is every single word well, let's um, um, let's read the passages, um, Reverend. If you can read the NIV version, that would be great, just to get us started. Uh, four, uh, four, four to thirteen. Yes, it's on the screen. Can you see? Yes. Okay. Is it large enough? Yes. Okay. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any to a war, it penetrated even to dividing soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It judges the thought and attitude of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Amen. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. So yeah, so that that's it. This is uh, the NIV version, and I put three of them down because they all extract a very uh, different component, but uh, they give a greater depth to this passage. And as we we read this and as we proceed, we'll understand why this is important for us to understand. So in the beginning here, we see that it's alive and active in this particular um, NIV version. So it is tangible, it is, it is active and it's alive. It, is, it penetrates, um, it's a double-edged sword. So it has, if, if you imagine words like a sword, even as I'm speaking, they have an activity associated. In this particular uh, uh, version, it's saying it's penetrating and to the point where it is able to divide a soul and a spirit joints and marrow it is able to judge so the word is accompanied with judgment with justice justice and judgment on our thoughts and attitudes of every heart and here's a beautiful, because it says nothing, absolutely nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. And because the word is alive and active, the word, um, I didn't put this here, but we're aware that the word was there from the beginning. And so this activity and this living aspect or component is timeless. The beginning is the beginning is the beginning. Is is it is actually God Himself. 
because the word, as we will see, comes from him. And everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Amen. So there's an accountability and everything. That means nothing. When we, when we use that word, everything, it means that nothing is missed. Nothing is omitted. There's nothing he's not aware of. And it, it is regardless of what time in this natural history that we live in, in the history of the world. So a thousand years, 2000 years in the past, 4,000 years in the future, this word is able to have a role. Amen. It, it has nothing, no, nothing that it is unable to do. If we can read um, just the New King James Version, and then I believe the last one is the New Living Translation. I, I didn't put that down, but I can put that down. Um, that would be great. New King James Version, see. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joy and marrows and is a discerner of the thought and intents of the heart. And there's no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. You can keep going. Oh, you can keep going. New Living Translation. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between John and marrow. He exposed or innermost thought and desire. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable. So what we want to see here, I'm going to combine these two because and just add, compound on what we, we read in the NIV version. And here it it's in the in the NIV it says it's alive. It gives a um, more emphasis on the word it's living. It's it is it is living, uh, it is powerful. So it's active, it's alive, it's living, it's powerful. It's like uh letting us know without a doubt we cannot have a misunderstanding of what this is saying the word of god is so direct and clear and again a different word here is used piercing you know penetrating and pierce to me that also brings to mind when something pierces i don't know if you've ever had your ears pierced or it, it there's a little bit of a sharp pain and when something cuts this it, it hurts it, it can hurt and sometimes you can have a, a paper cut and you're not even aware of it until maybe it it widens or something the air and then you're like why does I feel pain and then you see it and and that's what I feel like when something penetrates sometimes we're not aware of it uh, in the beginning but a piercing is is very uh, we're aware there's a uh, there's a piercing uh, companies a pain but it it's like it gets there it's very accurate again here we have the soul and the spirit and the joints and marrow these are all things that we know are so close they are so closely connected and what is being communicated here is the power and the ability of the word of god to cut through anything here it's saying it's a discerner the word here before it was it says this was a judge here we hear that it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart so to the naked eye in the natural realm we can use our intellect and maybe look at body language and say oh maybe this person is upset or this but the word itself as we speak it, it is alive and it is, has power to discern, to know what a naked eye or a naked ear cannot interpret or understand. These are the mysteries of the spirit. 
because these are words of the spirit. This is for the spirit realm. In the spirit realm, nothing is hidden. Words can discern thoughts and intents of the heart. If we recall in the word of God, Jesus said God knew what was in a man. When he was uh, addressing the Pharisees, he, 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 he was able to discern what they were thinking and what their intentions were. We as humans in the natural realm can put a, a masquerade, can be deceiving on the outward and, and or just we just don't know unless we, we've been um, given privy, invited to an information. But here we're learning that the word, this word that we speak, the words are able to discern intention of the heart. And this is an, uh, uh, an, an elaboration or a description of the power of the word. And again, we hear it's naked. In the, in the other one, it says laid bare. That in his sight, nothing is naked. When something is naked, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything is exposed. Open. So nothing is closed off. In, in other words, in the natural realm, maybe there's a big wall, there's a security guard, there's fierce dogs. There are things that are, are put to enforce, uh, to keep things away or out, padlocks. But here the word is able to discern, is able to, it says no creature, Thing in creation is exempt from the word of God. So open to the eyes to whom, again, we are accountable. Every situation and circumstance is accountable to the judge, God the Father. In the last one, the New Living Translation, it uses the word that the, the, the edge, now another way to describe the sword as cutting between soul and spirit. With all this penetrating, piercing, cutting, it is able to separate. And what we, we understand, it separates that which is hidden, that which is in the dark, that which is not of God. So on un, healthy soul ties, the word is able to separate. It exposes. This is a powerful word. It exposes. So when something is exposed, it means that it was not supposed to be known. It is exposed. And this, what is saying here is that it's the thoughts and the innermost desires are exposed. So they cannot be hidden. Again, it emphasizes that nothing is hidden. Nothing in all creation is hidden. Everything is naked, exposed. We have the word here again, exposed before his eyes and the one to whom we are accountable. Amen. So the reason I was emphasizing all this is to, to show the treasure that we have, the power that we have in this just one uh two verses here and you can take it so much further and this is what I want us to elaborate on I, I want us to be able to use this particular passage and really visualize the different verse, verses and different aspects of the word of God when we use when we use them when we speak them when we intercede when we pray that in the spirit realm, penetrating whatever situation, it is actively piercing, actively making an imprint, an indent, separating, for example, an unhealthy soul type, removing, cutting out, for example, cancer, the things that are hindering. And so I put here before we pray, the reason for this powerful scripture is to help us understand that we want to be able to use the word of God in exactly the way it is. And this scripture has so many uses. 
So we want to use it before we pray. I want us to prepare our hearts as we pray. We pray all the time. Some of us intercede. And if we're not aware of how, I want us to, uh, this is supposed to be able to take us um, just a, a different layer, taking the word in the spiritual way to understand how and what we are doing. So we, when we recall what the word says about battle, this is very important for several reasons. I'm going to read it here in Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, because a lot of us have difficulty separating human beings from the hurt, quote unquote, that they have caused or caused upon us the trauma from another person, from a situation. We could say, if I hadn't met them, if this hadn't, it, if someone tells you a story, you could say, do you know what they said? Can you even believe they did this to me? I can't believe. And why it's very important for us to understand the perspective of God is because when we apply the word of God in Hebrews 4, 12 and 13, we want to apply it in the way the Lord has given us. It says here in verse 10, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. We saw in the word, in, in the verse, that this verse comes with power. The word of God itself has power. And he's saying, be strong in his power. And his power is found in his word. So he's saying, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. So the devil has a lot of schemes. His schemes are to kill, steal, and destroy. They're designed to do that. And in verse 12, this is the very, very key, very key for a lot of us. It says, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Let's just sit there for a moment. Because when we are sending the word, it's not against flesh and blood. So the person who hurt us or the such circumstance or situation came through a human being. Yet here it's telling us that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now, in the spirit, this earthly realm is a heavenly realm. It is a realm. And we are the, the, the ones, the one is orchestrating the hurt and the pain is a spiritual power are demonic powers, demonic spirits. If we look at the devil's schemes, he can use your, your husband, your best friend, family members, people close to you to hurt you. Now, in the, the reason this is so important is that when we pray, we shouldn't be targeting humans but we should be targeting the spirit, the action behind them, the spirit that is creating the person or the agent. We, we, we have a term where we call we can be agents of darkness knowingly or unknowingly, but it's very important to understand that the person is not whom we should place our hatred upon but the enemy behind the person using the person this is, is so important because we are able to look at individual circumstances and situations through God's eyes think of yourself think of myself and yourself when the, the word of God tells us that while we were still sinners, God died for us. It was the compassion that Jesus had for us that caused him to die while we were still sinners. In other words, the sin and the activity 
that we were all engaged with finding worldly ways to fight and to take revenge on somebody else for hurting us and laughing at their their demise because oh good for you you hurt me so now it's time for you to receive the same thing you did for me these when 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 we are when we are aware of the spirit realm and we're aware that we live in a spiritual world and that the real enemy is the devil with his schemes, we are able to intercede correctly. We are able to intercede with compassion for the person because as we will see, God has, he his heart is that no one, no one, even the meanest person you can think of does what God desires that no one will miss his salvation no one will miss the salvation of the Lord what does that mean it means that he desires that everybody receives grace receives his love is able to be taken out of the pain caused by sin. Everyone is able to repent. Um, I hope it's clear. I'm going to move on to the next fight. And, and, and this is because the battle is actually the Lord's. What is he battling for? In, in Samuel, 1 Samuel 17, 47, um, Reverend, are you able to read it? Hold on. First Samuel seventeen forty seven. All those gathered here will know that is not by sword or spear that the Lord save. For the battle is the Lord, and He will give all of you into our hands. Amen. Amen. So thank you. So the the reason this is what I'm trying to tell us that the battle against that we are in the spiritual battle belongs to the lord we are in a spiritual battle there are casualties there are there are people we are wounded there are situations going on on every level it, when i say every level i mean you know in your own situation our own situations perhaps within our own nuclear family in the nation we live in in the in the global scale there's issues, whether they're caused by nature, whether they're caused when we see them from our naked eye. But when we look in the spirit realm, there is an enemy, a devil scheme working to cause, to, to, to try to win as many souls so that many, many will lose their salvation. So the battle is the Lord's for he, and this word in Hebrews 12, that, I mean, chapter 4, 12 and 13 is one of his tools. So we must be able to use it in a way to break down the enemy's uh, schemes. So the first point is that the battle is not against flesh and blood. The second one is that it is the Lord who is the one fighting. For who? for you and I, for those who are hurting us, for those whom we have hurt, for all the evil going through in whatever, all the evil conspiracies that we see, he is the one and he wants us through our prayer to be able to fight with his word so it can pierce, it can cut, it can do what it's supposed to do. through through us through you and i how it says that he has given us authority in luke 10 19 i put two versions down I, I love to expound and i encourage everyone to look in sometimes different um translations because they bring a greater depth as well in addition, of course, the Holy Spirit is the one who leads us into all understanding. In Luke 10, 19, it says, behold, I give you the authority. This is 
the Lord speaking. You is you and I. So we have been given the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Wow, that is so powerful. So the authority to use the word of God comes from our Lord. He says, I've given it to you. Serpents, scorpions, you know, where they have poison, they can sting. This is uh, also a way just to express terrible damage, uh, kill, steal, destroy. Things that are the enemy can use to destroy us, to hurt us. And we'll go, we'll, 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 we'll take, we'll dissect those types of things later. But here is just to understand that when the Lord sends us into battle, it's his battle, but he doesn't send us unequipped. He's already given us, as we can see, Hebrews 4, chapters 12 and 13 that we will use. We have the backing of the authority. Again, it says, look, I've given you authority over all the power. Both of them tell us that the enemy has power. It's a powerful enemy. But if we saw, remember in Hebrews, it says that nothing, the word is powerful over everything and nothing is hidden. All creation. So here, when it says that we have authority over the power of the enemy, this is great news. We have to believe it. And it's saying you can walk among snakes and scorpions and do what? Crush them. And nothing will injure you. Again, just in terms of authority, Matthew, in Matthew 28, 20, 18 to 20, um, Amen. Um, are you able to read? Sorry. Okay. Can you move the screen up a little bit? Because yes, yes, yes. So he said, and Jesus, Matthew 28, 18 to 20, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So here, Jesus again is speaking of the authority and he elaborates on it much more here. He's saying that that authority that belongs to him, it's been given to him and that authority encompasses heaven and earth. So it's everywhere. We saw in Hebrews, it says all, cre all creation, all creatures are subject, are subdued under him. He says, I have the authority over everything and then we have got it and because of that when when we when he wins us over when we receive salvation he says therefore go he has a charge he's saying because i have the authority i'm giving it to you he says go it's a command he's saying okay i'm giving it to you go make disciples of all nations baptize them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit teach them to observe all things that i have commanded you and this is i mean it's all beautiful but this is perhaps the most important he says i'm with you always even to the end of the age so we are never by ourselves he is always with us it is his authority that he has given. It is his word that he is giving through us to ex execute. And he he's always with us. So his, so this is more about his authority, but in this particular scripture, you see that his desire is that none, you know, that everyone becomes his follower, everyone, all the nations. 
this is his heart. So when you look at someone and they have hurt you and they have, they've, they've, you know, done unimaginable things to, to intentionally hurt you, we, we have to go back to the scripture that says that the enemy is not the flesh and blood and understand that he is using situations, people to hurt us. And it's important, like I said, because when we pray, we must be able to separate the person from the evil that is being done so that we can break it, we can cut it, we can dissect it, we can remove it, we can penetrate and remove the 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 um the block that the enemy has put in there the damage the last one on authority is jeremiah 110 and uh, there's more but i chose these for a reason because if you put yourself here today i appoint you you whoever listens to this to stand up against what nations and kingdoms Some you must uproot and tear down, others destroy and overthrow, and others you must build up and plant. How do we do this? With the word of God. The word is the tool. The words. So the next thing we must understand is that everything and every soul belongs to him. He, he, he cares. And this is why we must learn to dis discern, to separate the person from the sin. It says in, in Psalms 24, 1, that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. All its people, whether it's, it's that person who is being labeled by the world as a dictator, as someone corrupt, as someone who's just greedy, Maybe that's what they're doing, but God still loves them and God still yearns for their soul to belong to him. In 1 Peter 2.25, it says, once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. So we are told here that he is the guardian of our soul, that all of us, every person, was like a sheep wandering away. Whether you're de derailed by sin, by circumstances, who knows? Some people are born uh, on the, on the, and then the mother puts them on the street or throws them in the dump, dumpster and somebody else finds them. The circumstances we find ourselves in sometimes are not our own doing. We inherit them. The point here is that no matter what Jesus is trying to pull everyone out of their evil condition, their, 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 their hurtful atmosphere. It says, if we continue reading, it says, for you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your soul. So we have a shepherd. We have someone who is looking at every single soul, whether they are, quote unquote in the world's eyes the most evil person or the most best person he's looking at the condition of the soul of the heart that nobody can see with your bare eyes we need discernment of the holy spirit to understand where everybody is and this is why hebrews 4 12 to 13 is such a powerful verse to understand how we can apply all the word of god so when we pray in the spirit, we intercede. And in Ephesians 6, 18, it says, pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for who? For all the Lord's people. We just saw that every single human being belongs to him. Does that mean they're all on the right path? No, but his desire is to bring them to, into salvation. In 1 Thessalonians 5, it says, pray without ceasing. 
there's another um, version. I didn't put it down, but it says that we must keep watch. We must keep. There's so many situations. If you sit and look and just open the your the computer or a newspaper, fire here, earthquake there. People died in a in a on a bridge. The bridge collapsed. Someone burnt their baby. Another one killed their wife. You know, and there's just all kinds of evil going on, and we. Believe it or not, the prayers we make, if we pray correctly, we pray against the evil. The word of God tells us it is powerful and it can penetrate and pierce any situation. So when when we before we pray or as we pray, we we repent. Because rep when we are unrepentant, we repent. Uh, what I want to say is that when we intercede. We must posture our heart to repent for the sin that the people or the situations, the circumstance that the uh, that has been caused. Because we want to intercede on behalf of the people who are agents of darkness, who are doing the evil on behalf of the devil. And we want to repent before the Lord for them so that this, it says here the sin that has been acted out can be wiped out. And times of refreshing can come from the Lord. James 4, 8 says, I'm just watching the time. It says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Bill 18, 22, it says, for I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the sovereign Lord. Repent and live. The Lord doesn't want any soul, any human being to miss his salvation. He died for every single soul. So when we come into prayer, when we take that posture, we want to repent on behalf of anyone. The world will say, but they're the one who did the evil. Why are you praying for them? Why are you But this is how we... We prepare and enable the word of God to permeate and penetrate and pierce into the situation and circumstance to make a change. Joel 2, 12, 13 says, rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. Every single scripture here is, got, is loaded with so much. But for the point of, of this is saying the Lord wants the heart. He's trying to change our hearts. He's trying to change the heart of every human, the condition. And he desires. His, his heart is one of love. He loves that person who might be so much have doing acting so evil has probably sold his soul to the devil i'm sure we've heard that that saying given his for power for gain or, or maybe he hasn't but this maybe it's a mechanism of to protect themselves because because they have been hurt regardless of the reason lord wants everybody's heart to heal he wants there to be healing and his it says that his grace and his compassion abounds he's not angry he's not looking at us as ang angrily he's looking at the situation that caused the hurt and the pain and the hatred to nurture and be to be in the situation and circumstance and that's what he is angry about but he wants to pull everybody out of that pain he wants to fill them with love and healing and so he doesn't want to send the, the the a harsh rebuke or situation on the person, but he will do it if it means that he wants, if that's what it means to wake somebody up or to change a situation. But he is longing for every heart to be belong to him. So in Matthew 4, 17, it says, from that time, Jesus began to preach saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now, this to me is very powerful because it's connected with the kingdom, with salvation. When we repent, we receive salvation. 
Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So as an intercessor, we can pray for someone's heart to change. We can repent on their behalf. Amen. And we can see healing. We can see the power of the prayers. It says everything is accountable, is held accountable. So when we pray, we'll be able to see just from prayer. We don't even have to go communicate to the person in person, in real, in, in but this, the battle is won in prayer. Again, it says that the Lord is gracious and compassionate. He will not turn his face from you if you, turn, if you return to him. And the prayer of a righteous man has great power to prevail. Therefore, confess the sins to one another. Pray for one another so that you may be healed. Now, um, I, I'm looking at uh, the time here. Oops, excuse me. But I'm going to keep going because what I want to do here, I, I'll appreciate any comments, questions, or corrections. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll put here that in Psalms 107.10, it says, Some sat in darkness, in utter darkness, prisoners suffering in iron chains. Now, this is to bring us all this, that all what I was sharing is to bring us to this point that there are many people maybe or many situations that are helpless that these are described as darkness there seem to be no way out no no you know no star no no light at the end of the tunnel people children who are abandoned in the streets or or i was looking the other day on on the news it says that another truck of children was found they were in padlocks behind a, a truck and this person opened the truck and these little three to four year olds came out they were taken to the bathroom then they were brought in and put back in the cages and locked but someone saw and they called the police and they took the the license so they were following the car and they took and they found so many children in small cages now people are another one in 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 you know there's human trafficking people are in enslavement whether they're in a marriage or they're in a home or they're addicted to drugs or pornography they're manipulated by witchcraft through entertainment to go after riches powers lies they're feeling trapped or maybe they don't feel trapped but they are in a situation that is being controlled by the this this is a scheme of the devil in whatever situation and they have no way out but the word so the word we want to use when we pray, um, we we want to use the word and and um, utilize it. So, for an example, here it says the nations are angry. Why do they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepare for battle. The rulers plot together against the Lord and His anointed one. As we go into, as we look at situations. There are so many things we're not aware of, but we can see uh, why 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 do we all of a sudden have to wear a mask? Why do we like we can see things in the reality and we can say why? What's behind it? And we can pray and get revelation. So as we pray for the people sitting in darkness, for the situations that are seemingly beyond the control of, of a natural remedy. We send the word, we send the word, we send the word, and that word will penetrate, it will pierce. We say, send your word to separate the evil. Whatever, you know, as we pray, we'll pray for the people who are the ones kidnapping the children, the ones who are receiving the money, the ones who are performing the uh, maybe sex crimes against children or you human beings. And we ask the Lord for mercy. We repent on their behalf. We say, Lord, forgive them. We ask you for the mercy, Lord. Those who are plotting evil to topple nations, to just 
ask to just be agents of darkness, Lord. We ask mercy on their soul. We ask for your mercies, O oh Lord, over them. Over all the situations, we repent, O oh Lord, on their behalf. We ask you for your mercies, your mercies, your mercies for those who are temp contemplating at this time to kill another human being, to take another's life. Oh Lord, we ask your mercies. We ask your mercies for those who have just done so, Lord. For those either through abortion or just killing somebody. Lord, we ask for those who are just lying, stealing, changing, forging uh, accounts so that they can take money, steal it, stealing money through cracking codes online. Lord, this, there's so many, so much evil. We ask for your repentance, or oh, your forgiveness and your mercies, oh Lord, your mercies on these individuals and these situations. Lord, as we pray, we ask for your spirit, your spirit. You say that you will send your spirit upon all flesh to pierce the heart of every single person, whether they're the perpetrator, whether they're the children who are in, in darkness in the situations, we ask for your word to penetrate, to penetrate, to penetrate, to separate the darkness, to remove the hatred, to remove it from the heart, Father, to remove the evil thoughts, to remove the the, the contemplating, the desires, the intentions that are there even now as we're praying, Lord. We send your word, your word into the heart throughout the world, everywhere, in every nation, in every situation. Those people who are in darkness, who are trapped and they're not even aware, Lord. We send your word to separate Father, to separate, to bring clarity, to bring a sound mind, your, your word, Father, to go. We dispatch your word with the angels to enter into the hearts of all, to make an imprint, to pierce, to make there be an unsettling, to help that there be no more ha, 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 thoughts that are evil, things that are just going to destroy the soul, Lord. Father, to make people even think, those people who are thinking now to take their own lives, oh Lord. We ask for your word to interject, to intercede, to end, oh Bazekereka. We ask, Father, that you will send people even now as we're praying, ha, 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 to expose the evil, to expose the evil, Father, that, they, that what the enemy intended for evil will not come to pass, Lord. We're sending your word your word that doesn't come back void, Father, to enforce, to act, Father, to, to remove all the plans and the plots of the enemy, that there will be, hallelujah, thing, Lord, a healing of the hearts, that the bitterness, the pain that the people are feeling, Lord, that you remove it, that you remove it, that you... Oh, Lord, that you visit these people in their dreams, that you give them the hunger and the thirsting for the righteousness, for the truth, that you will be you yourself will work in their situation, Lord, that they will not feel abandoned, that you will bring ha 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 ha. You will you will cause exposure of every circumstance and situation, even now as we're praying for those who are involved heavily in this human trafficking. Ha ha ha, Lord, send your send your word send your word let there be an an un, a massive exposure lord ha 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 strip the enemy of all their power your word says that you are more powerful the battle is yours that you want no soul to be lost lord we send your word to expose the plans of the evil the evil the schemes of the enemy in all these situations lord even now you are moving you are acting lord may your word continue its work until father it has achieved father we will see it in in the news father let us see more and more victories of all ha 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 cartels that are disrupted that are exposed that are stripped of their power that have been found out lord let your word work and not just to disband them but work further so that they will find you that they will encounter you that there will be healing of every heart that they will call upon your name father and receive your salvation that they will receive healing lord ha 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 that they shall be, receive your love 
Father, we pray as we continue praying, Lord, as we continue to use your word to go and to divide, ha, 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 to divide, to work through evil soul ties to remove to separate them separate them separate let there be a separation that can only be credited to you O oh lord that your word is alive it's active it's powerful and it will not come back for it but let it be according to your word let it be according to your word lord we love you we bless you we know that when we speak it even once it will go it is working it is active and we bless you for you are faithful to your word and you have the final word in everything lord may you be honored may you be glorified lord and it's and we seal these prayers in your blood in the mighty most precious name of yeshua we pray amen amen and amen 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 we will continue um this because there's a, other aspects to understand in this i just um let uh, me just send the the the, the thing to okay. the same link so we instead you can stop sharing the, the i screen. have to yes and i stop re recording yeah please. Stop recording